or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I still don't know. And I still have a damaged finger, which I will discuss briefly in this film. Now I know what you're wondering. What film's this then, Edge? Well, I will tell you what this film is, my dear. This film is uh, kind of a two-parter with a haul video, which hopefully will go up at the same time. Uh, but before I actually show you the bits and pieces that I've used today, uh, public service announcement. I have had a dozen people in the last couple of days tell me that they've been unsubscribed from my channel. Despite the fact not only have they been long term subscribers, but they had the notification bell rung as well. Uh, I don't know what YouTube are playing at. <sighs> I've hit 400 subscribers three times so far this week because every time I hit it, within 20 minutes or half an hour I'm losing two subscribers and then have to earn them back again but apparently a dozen of those were people who'd been unsubscribed without them wanting to be unsubscribed uh, so do please check because I will miss you even if you won't miss me now from this whole video there are a number of new things that I have tried. In fact, there's so many that I can't actually fit them both in both hands. So, if you want to see exactly how I achieved this look, then my friend, you are in just the right place. feet up, grab a snack, here comes a tutorial. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, okay. Um, if you haven't already watched my haul video, I will link that in the description box below because all the stuff I'm using today is from that and I've just had great fun trying to clean up this white mixer which every time you try and use the pump it goes absolutely everywhere so I need to get hold of Beauty Bay and let them know they've sent me a duff one right face is washed and moisturized but it's not primed yet I'm going to give this Lacura snapshot ready um, primer a go ah oh, look at this nice little safety seal that's what I like to see uh, because as I discussed in my haul video the outside of this certainly looks like a full on dupe for the Smashbox photo finish, photo, photo finish, yeah photo finish primer uh, and actually squeezing it out it looks exactly the same so I'm going to put some of this onto the areas that I struggle with most in terms of keeping foundation on um, because I have found with the Smashbox one it did actually help underneath my using it underneath my antiperspirant one it did actually help with keeping foundation on more um, I used it under the Revolution Fast Base one, which as you know, it just looked awful on me. It didn't look, well, it didn't look awful, it just didn't last. Um, okay, that little bit has actually gone a lot further than I thought it was going to. It's actually covered my whole face. So, that's the primer test. Well, I say tested, I won't be able to fully give you a review on it until later on, obviously. Um, feels very silicony um, on your hands similar to the Smashbox 
photo finish. I keep wanting to say foco photo focus, but that's wet and wild. Um, so I'm going to go in with this antiperspirant gel, which you all know I use because, well, I say all, I've, I've got quite a few newbies. Um, I've got osteoarthritis through three quarters of my spine, I've got fibromyalgia, I've got sciatica, I've got alodnia, which is super, super sensitive skin pain. Um, so I use this because side effects of chronic pain and medication that I take, side effects from like the morphine, for example. Um, gives me a lot of facial sweating and I really really struggle with keeping foundations on especially I mean even in the winter but especially so in the summer and I've actually found that this works really really well so we'll pop that on and just let that soak in if you're wondering what that's all about um, I managed to completely rip my own nail off. Uh, these are actually my nails just with acrylic on the top. I had a fibro spasm when I was putting the handbrake on, which made my fist clench and my shoulder jerk. And I ended up catching the nail on the knob of the gear stick. And instead of just lifting the acrylic off of the nail because it was my actual nail it was attached to rather than a nail tip, it basically snapped my nail in half, sort of, you know, halfway down the nail bed. Um, so obviously I've, I've only got like half a stumpy nail and the nail bed. So I want to try and keep that as clean as possible. I don't want to get any makeup or anything on it. So finger condoms, it, I'm really not flicking you off there, I promise. Finger condoms at the moment, it is. So just give that a little bit more time soak in a little bit. Um, one of the things that I did mention in my haul and then completely forgot until ages later to give you the details of it, um, I'm actually a Gerard Cosmetics affiliate which is amazing um, and my code BOMBER in all caps, I'll put it up on screen somewhere, will save you 30% not during the Black Friday sales but any other time of year it will save you 30%. Um, it is an affiliated code, so unlike the one that I've got for September Rose, where if you use that you get 10% off any order over £10, I don't earn from that. Um, the Gerard Cosmetics one, if you use it, you'll save 30%, I'll get a small commission. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even expecting to get up to the minimum payer amount, which I think is 25 quid on most affiliate things. Um, I'm, I'm more happy for the fact that you can save 30% on your order, basically. Right. Yep, that feels like it's all soaked in nicely now. Now, if you have seen, I'm pretty sure this review is up, my LA Girl Pro Coverage illuminating foundation review yet yeah, this is meant to be porcelain this is their lightest shade Duh. does that look like porcelain to you no nah. so i picked up the white mixer which is exactly the same range the illuminating foundation range but when it arrived um it was the white had leaked out everywhere and I'm already quite a long way down this already um, and I've only used it once so I need to get hold of Beauty Bay and I know they've sent me a defunct one but I have mixed some of the foundation with some of the white mixer and just to give you an indication on the difference in tones let me just put a little bit of this on so this is the porcelain Turn the light off this side again That's that's the porcelain Really? And then 
that's the shade that I've mixed up, which actually is porcelain. A little bit of a difference there, as you can see. Um, but if I remember rightly, I really liked how that foundation sat on my skin. And I think it lasted quite well for an illuminating one as well, because obviously oily combo skin. So let's get you zoomed in a bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, to about there. And then I'm just going to pop... I've probably mixed up way too much here. Just going to draw some cat whiskers on. And do a little heart on my nose. Because I'm playing silly buggers today, clearly. And then let's have some Klingon Richies up there. And then there's some pointillism down here. Now you all know, I tend to carry my foundations across my eyes anyway. Right, haven't played silly buggers, let's bounce this. This is clean, it's fresh out of the washing machine, um, but it's stained. So, let's just bounce this into the skin. Yeah, this is much more, my, in fact I might even have made it a little bit too light. Never mind, that's what bronzer's for. It's much easier to bronze up a foundation that's too light than it is to try and disguise one that's too dark. Oh, I do like the finish of this. Um, I used to always want a matte foundation because of having oily skin. Um, dewy foundations just wouldn't last. They still don't last, to be quite honest, on my skin. Um, but this one actually did really well, if I remember rightly. I have had some of the um, Gerard Cosmetics Lip Plumper Lip Gloss thing on while I was doing the haul. They do feel nice and soft, actually. I think I have gone a wee bit too light, so let's just carry that across onto the ears so we don't have bright pink ears at the side. Uh, let's just build a little bit of coverage up, just on the areas that we need it most. As I said, I've actually got oily combo skin. I've actually got pretty much everything except sensitive skin. Um, my Temples, my nose, top lip and chin get very oily. Um, the bit just between my eyebrows and one patch on the side of the nose here. My under eyes and the very bottom of my jawline here go dry. My cheeks are normal, my eyelids get a little bit oily during the day um, but I find that putting my foundation and then my concealer across and setting it will hold it. Um, I don't find that, it, it, mine, mine don't get so oily that I need to use a separate eyelid primer which is great because obviously that saves a little bit of money. If you're wondering what that flash is, it's my phone. I've got it so that it flashes when I've got a notification coming in. And obviously I've got it on silent at the moment. I have mixed up way too much of this, but let's just see how well we can build this up. Because last time I had to use it very, very thinly because of the fact it was totally the wrong colour. Definitely made this a little bit too light. Never mind. 
there's your day bin. Hope it's been a good one so far. Or, if you're at the start of your day, I hope it's going to be a good one. I've got quite a few new subbies recently, which is awesome. Just hit 400. Well, I say just hit 400. I actually hit 400 subscribers three times so far. Because every single time I've hit 400, literally within 30 minutes, I lose two subscribers. Um, and I've now had 12 different people tell me that they were unsubscribed from my channel. So YouTube, as ever, are being really, really unhelpful to smaller subscribers, uh, smaller content creators rather, because... You know, I'm, I'm nowhere near monetization levels, nowhere near. You know, I've, you need to have a thousand subscribers, so again, I'm only 40% of the way there. And in the preceding 12 months, you have to have 4,000 hours watch time. I think I've got 2,000 odd hours at the moment. So I am a long, long way from being monetized, so I really don't understand why they keep doing this to small creators why you know if you're a larger creator with like x number of millions you probably don't notice if you lose a few subscribers here and there because you're picking up probably a thousand a day but for people like myself our numbers mean a lot to us we work bloody hard to build our channels up um and it's, it's so frustrating when you see your numbers dipping for absolutely no reason. So if you're new, welcome. If you're a subscriber of mine from a long time, just double check you are actually... Wow, I've really got floating white head thing. Just double check you are still subscribed because uh, there's a pretty good chance you might not be. Um... Two face born this way, the new one concealer in shade Swan. So let's. It's probably going to be darker than than this blooming foundation now. So I just. As I was saying, I literally use just concealer and then set it on my eyes. Um, that does absolutely fine in terms of um, keeping eyeshadow in place throughout the day. And I've tried the previous Born This Way concealer, which is actually a radiant concealer. Um, but this one is meant to be more full coverage. This is, they describe this as super coverage, multi-use sculpting concealer. Conceal, contour, highlight and retouch. Because obviously I'm still looking for a bang on replacement for my Tarte Shape Tape. Because although the Revolution Conceal and Define gives you the same amount of coverage as Shape Tape does. I do find that if I'm wearing it all day it does go a little bit dry under my eyes after a while. Um, which the Tarte Shape Tape didn't. So I'm hoping that this reformulated all this way might actually be the bang on deep that I'm looking for. So, Coty Air Spun Translucent Extra Coverage. And this is a Morphe G38 brush. Um, that tailor used it, this particular brush, a lot. Um, for her concealer but the UK Morphe didn't stock it but I managed to pick one up from Depop where someone had bought a set 
that had got this brush in it and they didn't use this brush so I managed to pick it up thankfully. Bizarrely that's actually darkened that down. It could just be because my foundation is super super light at the moment that I'm noticing it more. But this um, Cotier spun, it's difficult for us to get in the UK. Um, this particular pot that I picked up, I got from a mate of mine who had been to America, picked up a pot of it and then just couldn't get on with the smell because it is very highly scented. Um, I actually like the smell, it reminds me of my nan's pressed powder that she used to use. I just use the G38 to push it into areas where I really struggle to keep foundation on. And then I use this big old fluffy, it's similar to the It Cosmetics one, um, big old fluffy brush just to set everywhere else. Yes, I know this is a, um, a an illuminating or a radiant foundation. So you're saying, well, what on earth are you doing setting it for then? Well, if I don't set it, there won't be any left on my face in about two hours time. Um, and my natural oils will soon break through this anyway. And we'll get the, the radiant effect back within probably a couple of hours. Um, but I, this, this is actually by far the most effective powder I've found for helping to control my oil production because on days when um, I'm not really wearing a lot of makeup I literally just put concealer on my dark circles, a bit of powder, a bit of lip gloss and head out the door. I've noticed that this powder does actually minimise my oil production during the day. Um, I absolutely love it. My advice to you if you're going to get it um, in the UK from Amazon, if you choose prime um, applicable sellers, even if you haven't got a prime account, um, because prime have to prove to um, Amazon that it's a genuine product before Amazon will ship it out for them, you know you're getting the right thing. right? Uh, to go with my Aldi, could it be a Smashbox dupe, uh, primer, I've got a Lacura Aloha Bronzer, which is in a cardboard thingy with a little brush, which is actually really quite soft. And um, looks a bit like that. doesn't smell of anything with a little mirror in the lid so does this scream hula bronzer to anybody by any chance so I'm going to give this a bit of a go and just see obviously I'm going in quite light-handed because I don't know how dark this is going to be and even though I do need to bronze up quite well today I don't really want to look like I've been rolled in hot Cheetos or Doritos or you know, some other orange snack. You see what I mean? I've gone a little bit ham that side. Uh, <laughs> Might have to go over that again in a minute with my um, brush that I've just set my face with. Just to, let's let's just see how well this buffs in, shall we? Actually, that's not looking that bad now. just, if 
you do go a little bit ham with it, if you just go over it with your powder that you've just used, because obviously there's still some powder in this brush, it just helps to soften it down a wee bit. And then um, I might put this little plastic sleeve thing back in it, just to just so that the, the little brush thing is kept separate. Right, and then Aldi also did a liqueur blush. This is in shade gold blush. Does it say that on the back of here anywhere? No, so if I want to know what shade it is, I'm going to have to pick the box. Does it look a little bit like a NARS one to you? With its uh, little mirror. Does that look like a NARS orgasm to anybody else? So I'm going in with this. It is clean, it's just stained. This is my... BH Cosmetics V2, this is from their vegan range. I haven't got a clue how much pigmentation there is in this, so I'm going to go in quite lightly to start with. Yeah, this is definitely NARS Orgasm shade, isn't it? A really flattering shade though I can see why it's been such a popular seller for Nars. It's got a bit of luminosity to it, it's got like um like a, almost like a gold mica. I don't know if you can see that in there. But um it is quite a luminous blush, so when I put my highlight on over the top, I am definitely going to have my usual Tin Man aesthetic, which pleases me greatly. So, I'm a little bit annoyed that they haven't got the actual name of the blush on the back here anywhere, because that means I'm going to have to keep this case so I know what shade it is in case they do more which is really frustrating because I'm trying to be good and throwing away cases she says trying to be good trying being the appropriate adjective I got myself a double-ended spoolie and eyebrow Ujima flip. But <sighs> clearly I need to glue that before I can use it. So let's go and get my other ones out from up here. This is actually a NYX one, and this is an Isabella Scott. And this is the Revolution Brow Pomade in shade Medium Brown. Because I've been... I think I've finally cracked how to do the eyebrows using a pomade without looking like I've been attacked with a sharpie is quite nice. My colour balance right now is all over this show because it's, it's about half past one now and it is so dark outside it's ridiculous. Right, so let's pick up some pomade on the brush. Oh, look, now I'm looking like me again instead of looking orange, that's great. I'm just going to run that. To create the brow shape that I want. 
then do the same at the top and then just fill in without actually picking up any more pomade on the brush so I can actually then start fading it as I come back this way and then just do a few upward flicky bits just at the start of the brow so it's a wee bit softer I go through phases, sometimes I want to use a pencil, sometimes I want to use a pomade and then again just brush through with the spoolie there, there's lovely and now I'm going to do the same thing the other side and end up with brows that are sisters not twins sisters not twins that furore over the James Charles palette now not being funny pigments that are containing any red dyes that are vegan are likely to stain. That's why in America they have to be called pressed pigments rather than eyeshadows because there is a risk of staining. So over in the UK you could still call them eyeshadows but you would have to have a warning that they could stain the eye area. In America the FDA hasn't quite caught up yet, so if it contains, I think it's red 40, because um, they used to use carmine, uh, which was formerly known as cochineal, and is basically ground up beetles. Um, but obviously with all the uh, animal friendly makeup and stuff that people want nowadays, especially if you're vegan, and cruelty free and everything ground up beetles not the best thing in the world but red 40 which is the only real red pigment that will give you any kind of satisfactory colour payoff is likely to dye your skin particularly if you're super super pale like myself or Cody Rance the girl that Put the video up. Um, colour theory, pink contains red, purple contains red, it's a mixture of blue and red. So you know all of those shades are likely to stain and not being funny, if she's a fan of Jeffrey, which she claims to be, when Jeffrey released his blood sugar palette, he warned that a lot of these colours are likely to stain. So I find it very difficult or disingenuous of her to say, How was I supposed to know? Well, love, it's pretty much common knowledge in the makeup industry that, you know vegan red shades are going to stain. Um, I've never had a shade that I couldn't get off using an oil-based moisture, uh, oil-based cleanser. Uh, I actually use at the moment this one which is the Vitamin E Dual Cleansing Oil 
from Superdrug where you just mix the two layers together. But if you don't have that, not being funny, you can go to your kitchen cupboard and you can get yourself some olive oil out and take your um, eyeshadow off that way. And that will sort out any staining. Sorry for the crinkling, I really should have taken these brushes out of the plastic before I started filming. But I wanted to show you that cheap £2 eyeshadow. Uh, shadow brushes can do just as good a job as your more expensive ones can. So I'm just getting a selection of these ready. Um, as regard the hives that she got where her face started to break out, that is an allergy issue. That is something that you do need to go and see your doctor about or your dermatologist because um, allergic reactions can go from mildly irritating to life threatening quite quickly. So if there's something that you've reacted to in that particular product, then you take the product with you to the hospital or to your doctor and you get them to check you out and find out which particular ingredient it is you're allergic to. Um, I just think, I think she overreacted um, with her rant video, although I do understand her channel is called Cody Rant, it's obviously something that she does, um, and I also think that James Charles reacted in a very unprofessional manner, but then, you know, this is a kid who got famous because he lied about his school photo and retaking it when actuality he just photoshopped it. He went on Ellen and lied to Ellen's face that uh, he'd bought his ring light in and blah 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 when actually he just photoshopped it. So don't know why we're surprised that someone who behaves like that is going to behave in an immature manner when talking to subscribers and customers. But that's just my thoughts on the matter. If you have separate thoughts and different ones, feel free to express them politely in the comments box below. Right, going in with this palette now. This is the Velvet Rose from Revolution. One of their reloaded palettes. I have wanted this for so long. Um, <clears throat> right, because this one is a matte and it's very close to my skin tone, although I have set my eyes already, I am just going to. Oh, I've got my colour switch here for tapping off into because that has actually kicked up quite a bit in that pattern. I am just going to very carefully and quickly just run that particular shade all over my eye because pigments from the same palette obviously work better on themselves so if you have got a shade that's close to your skin tone or one or two shades lighter I always find it worthwhile just to run that over the eye. Obviously if it's a matte shadow don't do it if it's a shimmer unless you particularly want that look. Right. I am going to go in with this shade here, this sort of dusky mauve which to me is very similar to Born Fresco from the Modern Renaissance palette. Now you can still follow my tutorial if you have a hooded lid. Now the way to check whether you have a hooded lid when you look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile eyelids, and so my lids are not hooded. I have got very deep set eyes, so I do get transfer from the mobile lid to the upper lid when I blink, because a lot of my lid goes way back in here. Um, that doesn't really bother me too much, because when my eyes are open, you don't see the transfer because it's tucked back in there. Now, if you don't see all of your mobile lids, you've either got a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as an Asian eye or a mono lid. 
you can still follow my tutorial. If you grab something like this with a flat top, with your eye open, just sketch out where you need your crease line to be. Now I can actually follow the socket of my eye. If you've had to raise your crease line up, obviously it's going to reduce the space between your crease colour and your brow. Uh, initially try raising your brows to stretch the eyelid out and looking down and maybe you know tilting your head back and looking down to increase the amount of space you've got or failing that just start off with a um, a slightly more tapered blending brush so I'm starting off with this one which has got a very wide head you need to start off with something a bit narrower like that maybe just so you don't blow the colour out quite so far. Now, I have picked colour up and I've tapped off. So I'm going to start off on the outside edge here. I'm going to do windscreen wiper, backwards and forward, just to lay my first crease shade down. And then I'm going to pick up the kick up that's in the pan. And now we're going to do little circular movements. So starting from the outside edge, keeping the bristles in contact with that first colour we put down. Circular movements to the middle and then lift the brush up slightly, reverse the direction and come back again. And then when you get to the outside edge, because I've still got more space, I can come up, go back to the original direction and come back again, as you can see. Now. I want to add a wee bit more colour up here because where I've got creasing happening here it doesn't always like to have shadow there so I do have to pay a little bit more attention just to make sure that I've got the depth of shadow that I want. So once you are happy with the depth of shadow that you've got we're then going to go back to the windscreen wiper movements, but we're going to go up and down and we're going to do little short ones this time. Just up and down like this. And then gently overlapping again, up and down, up and down. Just to make sure that we've absolutely got this blended out well. And that there are no areas where we have skipping or missing pigment. Now this eye, because I'm blind in this eye, it got pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid, and by kid I mean like five, six years old. So I actually have permanent creasing here. Now normally by doing the circles, it will... Sorry, I've got such an itchy nose today. Normally when you do the circles, it will stretch the skin of your eyelid very, very gently in all directions. And it will make sure, if you've got any creasing, that it actually blends it out. Because if I gently pull that, can you see the, the sort of tiger striping that I'm getting there? Now, unfortunately for me, because my creases there are so deep, that doesn't work for me. I have to very, very gently pull the lid out in order to get the blend right. Now I don't normally worry too much with the lighter colours. I tend to just do that with the final shade that I'm putting on, the deepest colour. Because I don't want to muck my eye around and pull it around too much more than it has already been subjected to. Now I like to leave sort of four or five mils from the lowest part of my brow so that when I put my highlight on, on my brow bone here, it has a little bit of a gap there so that it really shows up nicely. And also, carrying colour right up to your brows is quite an old fashioned way now. Um, a lot of people don't even take colour up as high as I do. 
but because I've got deep set eyes and because I've got a lot of lid to play with and because I like colour, oh, sorry, my towel is sliding off my hair, which is rather frustrating. So let me just pop my hair back out the way with a headband and continue because that was really irritating me. Oh, look like a stick of a dump. Right, so again, the short windscreen wiper movements up and down. I always do my blending in real time because I want you to have an indication of how long it will actually take you to create this look. Uh, and also, if you're learning, the last thing you need is for me to go, OK, I'm going to go do the other got eye off camera, because you're like, well, hang on a minute, I've now got to pause, rewind, and try and remember what you've just done, but do it in mirror image. It used to really, really wind me up when I was learning. Um, so I always said that I would never do that if I had my own channel. So, I'm not doing it. This is such a nice first shade to lay down. It really is a really nice. I do love, but then ugh, Bond Fresco is one of my favourite shades out of Modern Renaissance, so it's hardly surprising that this one, which is very similar, is going to be my favourite shade from this palette, is it really? Um, Makeup by Tammy, Tammy Clark actually did a side-by-side -side comparison swatch-wise of this Velvet Rose palette with the Anastasia Soft Glam and it is pretty much a bang on dupe so four quid for this one or 42 for the Anastasia one you choose I have been having problem recently getting pigment just to sit on this outside corner here um, all of my palettes have been doing that so that's a little bit frustrating. Right, I'm going to go down to a slightly more tapered brush. As you can see, I'm going from this dual fibre one down to this one, which is a little bit more tapered. And I'm going to go into this shade in the bottom here, this lovely chocolate brown. Again, an awful lot of kick up in the pan. But it does mean you get pigment on your brush, which is a good thing. So, again, I'm going to start off with windscreen wipering through my crease or wherever your crease needs to be. And I'm going to pick up the kick up tap off and then this time when I'm doing the blending I'm still going to do circular movements to the middle but instead of going up and then reversing direction I'm going to stay where I am and reverse the direction so that I actually keep this darker colour much closer down to the actual crease so that you can still see that first colour that we put down as you can see. This is a really nice chocolate brown this one and it's blending out really easily as well. No trouble at all with this blend. As you can see I'm just going to actually take the excess pigment off of the brush. So as you can see, there's no pigment coming off of it, even though the bristles are stained. And I'm just going to go back into that first shade, the lighter one. And I'm just going to very gently buff where the two shades meet, just to soften that edge out a little bit but to make sure that we don't actually lose that really gorgeous mauvey tone that we went in with first off. 
and then just just continue to just soften that brown a little bit and you can see the difference that makes between the two eyes straight away so we're now going to repeat that on the other eye this really is such a lovely palette I've got um, <clears throat> I think I've got two or three of their reloaded palettes now. I've got the first one that I picked up was the um, Iconic Division, which was the Duke the Subculture. Uh, the second one I picked up was the Cool Toned Browns and Lilacs, which actually came out. I think before the Norvena palette came out, um, but it is a, a pretty good dupe for Norvena. Um, and I've got the one that's all shimmers. Well, I say all shimmers, there's, there's two maps. Um, and I really like them. I mean, four pounds, you really can't go wrong. Uh, obviously some shades need a little bit more working with but then that's true of all palettes if you've got a darker pigment it's got more pigment molecules in it it's going to take a little bit longer to blend out but I mean you can see this is blending really nicely so I'm going to clean the excess pigment off of that brush again go back into that first shade I can see me going through that first shade in no time at all that's definitely going to be my my go-to crease colour that one I think I will try all of them out but that's definitely going to be my go-to and I'm just going to buff over the edge with that lighter shade just to really soften the edge of that chocolate brown so that it really melds and blends and meshes into the, the sort of mauvey grey that we originally laid down and again continue down to continue blending that beautiful chocolate brown through the crease there I really like that I'm just going to get the larger brush that I used before. I think I've gone in a little bit heavier this side. So I'm just going to use the larger brush just to smudge those edges just a fraction more. I think that's better. Now I'm going to go in with an even more tapered brush. You can see I've gone from this one to this one and now I'm coming down to this one. You can use just two brushes. You can start or you can use this thick one for the first two colours and then use a more tapered one for the bit we're about to do. I just wanted to try quite a few of those brushes out because this one is very very loosely packed so I'll be interested to see just how much it spreads it and I'm going to go in to this charcoal black here again quite a bit of kick up in the pan I'm going to tap off rather well. And just start off by very gently buffing that black just onto the outer third of the eye, the outer third of the lid there. 
then pick up some of the kick up, tap off, and then very, very gently just buff that about two thirds of the way along. I'm not going to take it right into the middle, I don't think. I just want to take it two thirds of the way. See, I'm really struggling just here to get pigment to stay on my eyes. Um, but even my Jeffreys and my um, higher end palettes have been doing that, so it's not the palette's fault. It is just my eye just here. But you can see if you tap, 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 you can build the pigment up. And then this time, when I do the buffing, the little circles, I'm not taking it up the eye at all, I'm literally just buffing that line out because I still want to see the chocolate brown and I still want to see the mauve shade but I just want to deepen up through the crease I really really like this And see this is going to turn into one of my favourite palettes even though it's not that colourful I mean this is a this would be ideal for sort of work college because it is absolutely ideal for that you know you could you could start off just with that light, that first shade, and just buff that through the crease, and then pop one of these lighter mattes on the lid, and you'd be done for the day. You know, you, know, you wouldn't have to. I mean, this is obviously more of um. But to be honest, I put glitters on on a wet Wednesday afternoon, so I'm probably not the best person to go by. But this to me is more of an evening or a going out look for most people. Um, but I mean, you can see if you if you you know if you were going out straight from work, you could pop this in your handbag with a couple of um, brushes. As I said, start off just with this shade, and then you could literally chuck the chocolate brown on, chuck the black on, put some shimmer on the lid, which we're about to do. You know, put some shading under the bottom lashes, and you'd be good to go for the night out. You know change your lip for something a bit brighter and um, this is such a nice palette I still can't believe this is only four pounds it's crazy pricing I've got no idea how they managed to do that because that is just silly pricing really I mean, four quid is awesome yes you don't get a mirror but I've got mirrors all over the place, you know, the palettes, I've got a mirror in front of me, I've got my viewfinder. Um, I really don't mind not having a mirror and of course it does have the benefit that then when you've got it shut, you can actually see which palette it is without having to open it. This. this is actually quite a pigmented black, I'm surprised. Um, most, most blacks end up looking more charcoal, but this is definitely, definitely black. Really nice, sort of like a char, like, like a sooty colour, you know. And I don't mean sooty and sweep from the sooty show, I mean soot from a chimney, you know? There's a flying thingy in here and it's really fidgeting me. I thought all those things were meant to be dead by now, it's November for goodness sake. Mind you, we've had such a mild autumn, it's ridiculous. I really, really like this. I don't know why I'm sounding so surprised, because I, I know I like Revolution's palettes anyway, but even so. Uh, let's do the bottom. 
some lash line before I put any shimmers on. Uh, I'm going to go in with this flat top brush. And I'm going to go in... Now I used this cool toned brown before. I'm going to come down and use this slightly warmer toned brown this time. And then I'm going to blend it out. Actually no, I'm going to go into this one and blend it out with that one I think. Let's keep the cool toned look going. So I'm picking up that nice chocolate brown that we laid down as our second colour. And I'm just gently smudging that under my bottom lashes. Going about two thirds of the way along. I always flinch with this side because obviously being blind in it I don't have any peripheral vision so I have to actually rely on uh, muscle memory and mirrors so I don't poke myself in the eye and regular viewers will know I'm not always very successful at that. I don't tend to put colours into my waterline because I've got very very watery eyes and if I do that it will just end up either coming off or sort of amalgamating here and look like a little black bogey or a little green bogey or a little purple bogey or whatever colour I end up using. Right, so I'm going to go into this sort of cafe latte sort of shade. Tap off well. I literally just got it on the tip of the bristles there. And I'm very gently just going to buff along the lower lash line just to soften that shade and smudge it down ever so slightly. And then I'm going to do the same with this eye. Oh, I'm still going to flinch. Now I normally get more fallout with this eye because my lids move more. Because they're more creasy. But actually there's not a huge amount of fallout from this palette at all. I'm quite impressed with that. Normally with a new palette I'll do my base after I've done my eyes but obviously where I was testing out the foundation mixer as well. Oh, this is such an attractive face I'm pulling. Hmm. And now you all know that I apply my shimmers As always, I've still got this, believe it or not, this is still the same bottle that I'm using. This is the Obsession, 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 I sound significant, Obsession, the Obsession Pigment Boost. Um, you can use anything. Um, you can use moisturising spray like Mario Badescu or Fix Plus. Um, you can use a setting spray or a fixing spray, something like this, or... You know, Gerard Cosmetics, someone you know, slay all day. Um, you could use a priming spray. You could even use just ordinary water. Now, which of these do I want to go on the lid with? I think I'm going to go in with this shade here. So, so sorry, my nose keeps running, it's awful. Okay, this is like a pressed, almost like a pressed glitter, which I'm not necessarily a fan of. Because they're a bit of a bitch to pick up on the brush. But I've got some. And then I shall wet. The brush and apply it to my eyeball. 
Well, not me eyeball. Me eyelid. Probably not my eyeball. Would be ridiculous. Now, normally I don't go back into the pan with a wet brush but because this is like a glitter rather than a shimmer. I'm actually going to go in with a wet brush just to see if it will pick up a little bit better, which I think it has done. The other shades in here look to be your standard shimmer finish, whereas this is much more like a a glitter almost. Um, I can show you with the, you can see it really sort of, probably should have put a glitter glue down, but We'll see how this lasts without using a glitter glue, but I will know for next time if I'm going to use that shade, I probably will put a glitter glue down. Um, I just use the NYX one. I mean, it is actually opaque enough to cover that black, so that's interesting and it's definitely got a nice high shine to it as well which is good be awesome for a, a party night out with some nice thick lashes on with it which I'm actually quite tempted to do today but I don't want to I don't want to lose the look of this eye look because I actually really like it. I'm actually just going to press any loose pieces back. Let's see if I can show you what I mean. I'm actually going to just gently push that back down so that hopefully it doesn't come out and go everywhere. I say hopefully of course and just hmm that's quite pretty I'm just going to clean that brush off on a face wipe just before I do anything else right it's time to try the new Jeffrey highlighter So this is the Supreme Frost in Wet Dream. Looks a bit like that. Hello White Balance, can we come back to me please? Kind of, maybe. You're thinking about it aren't you? Right. So I'm going to start off with Popping a little bit of this up under my brow, the tail of my brow here. Now, this does actually have like glitter in it, like mica. So if you don't like a glittery highlight, you will not like this. If you just want a really metallic-y shine without the glitter in, just go for one of his normal skin frosts. If you don't mind a bit of glitter, this is actually quite pretty. This is meant to be the baked gel format, isn't it? Oh look, my white balance has kind of sorted itself out. Now I look blue. Great. You watch, when I edit this, it won't be mucking about at all and you're all going to think I'm sounding like a loony. Some of this for a nice little inner corner highlight. Now he does actually say that if you want a real pow to apply it with your finger. I kind of like my eyeballs 
being where they are, even if only one of them works. So let's zoom you back out for a minute. Oh, yep, there we go. I'm going to go in with my Zoeva 105 Lux Highlighting Brush. And we're going to put some of that down the nose. Oh yeah, that, that's definitely shiny. Nearly as shiny as my old man's head. Blimey. And uh, top lip. And sticky out chin, courtesy of my dad. Thanks for that, dad. Much appreciated. A little bit just up between the brows there. And now here comes the fun bit. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that glorious? This, this is most definitely a look at me highlight. <laughs> That's just stunning, isn't it? I would definitely advise using um, a more dense brush like this rather than a fan brush to apply it though. I don't think a fan brush would give you anywhere near this sort of impact. And let's face it, if you bought a highlight like this you want it to uh, it, it's again it's one of these ones that the more you buff it into your skin the more of an ethereal kind of glow you get. Oh that's so pretty. Right I am going to pause you and I'm going to do some mascara and possibly some lashes I haven't decided yet. Uh, and I think I'm going to have to pull some curtains and put some lights on because even though it is only 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it is ridiculously dark in here. So, I'll be back instantly for you. As you can see, I decided to uh, bung some lashes on. Right, I'm going to go in with the Gerard Cosmetics Longwear Hydra Matte in Shade Invasion. So let's zoom you in. Oh, seriously, how good are these lashes though? Oh, beautiful. Right. Smells like vanilla, I love these. So you start off by doing the inner part of your bottom lip. Then you turn the dough foot sideways and use the edge of it to line your bottom lip. This is such a comfortable formula, it really is. But then for the top lip, we do the 45 degree rule. So you hold it straight up, then you turn it at a 45 degree angle, and you do your Cupid's bow on the outside edge of your lip. Ready? Bring it back to the center, and then turn it 45 the other way, and repeat. You now have a nice little M that you've done. Then turn the dough foot upside down and go from the corner of your mouth to the line you've just made. Now 
and then just fill in the rest. You can see this is a beautiful opaque formula. Let's see me back out again. I've had their metallic lips before. Um, I've only ever tried one of their Hydra mats because a friend of mine had a shade. Um, and the Gerard Cosmetics and the Jeffree Styles are two of the most comfortable liquid lip formulas that I've ever tried. Um, these are these aren't just called Hydra Matte for no reason. They they do not feel as if they are sucking the life out of your lips at all, which is obviously quite nice. And now I have my fan ready, and I'm going to go in with my little mini cucumber slay all day. Because let's face it, when we've gone to this much effort, we want to make sure, say it with me, that it stays put. So it is time to liberally douse our face. Most people would stop here. I'm not most people, I'm a little bit extra, and I like a little bit extra. You can stop now if you want. Now, the reason these Slay All Days work so well is that they do have, let me just double check, yeah, see alcohol is one of the first ingredients on the back and it's because it has such a high alcohol content that it actually holds your makeup in place all day. Now if you have very very dry skin um, you're probably going to be a little bit wary of any spray that's got high alcohol in it because obviously alcohol does tend to dry your skin out. That's why it's great in a setting spray because it holds your face in place. However, with these Gerard ones, obviously I've got my Jasmine full size that I've been using, I've got my mini cucumber and I've got a coconut one over there waiting for me as well. Um, I don't find with these that they they feel like they're sucking the life out of your skin. I've had, I mean other ones like the Urban Decay All Nighter, when you put that on your face really feels like someone's just gone <laughs> and taken all the oils and everything out. Um, you don't get that with the Gerard one at all. With the jasmine one, I do find that because this is quite highly scented, I, I have to keep my eyes closed just for a couple of seconds, just for that initial um, scent fume to dissipate before I open my eyes. But you could see with the cucumber one, I could open them straight away. Um, if you're finding that your eyes are a little bit runny or a little bit ooh after you've used it, just keep your eyes shut for an extra couple of seconds while the scent just wafts off and you will be absolutely fine. So, there we go. There is today's look using a lot of my new bits and pieces. Um, happy that the foundation now matches me but obviously I need to have a chat with Beauty Bay about the fact that the pump is knackered on that one and it was going absolutely everywhere. Um, 
the concealer feels very nice indeed. It doesn't let me let me get my little close up mirror. Um, it doesn't seem to be settling into any of the creasing that I have. Hang on, phone's going. Sorry about that, as I was saying. That was the hubby checking up on me, making sure I was okay, because he knew I was in quite a bit of pain today. Right, so what was I saying? Um, yes, like this foundation, now it's the right shade for me. Uh, it'd be interesting to see whether using this mixer changes how well it lasts. But as it is the same formulation as the foundation, which if I remember rightly, I really enjoyed, hopefully that will work out quite nicely. And although I thought I'd mixed it a bit light at first, it looks like it's either oxidised or I've bronzed it up well enough that it doesn't notice. Um, I was on the concealer, wasn't I? Um, hasn't dried out my under eyes at all, doesn't appear to be sitting in creases, so that's awesome. Obviously I won't be able to tell how well this has worked until I find out how well this does. Um, and obviously I'll try it under various other foundations that I know how. What I might do is use this on one half of my face and not on the other and then I can see exactly how well that works. Uh, the Aldi Nars knockoff and um, Benefit knockoff, I love both of those. They, they both blended out really nicely, good amount of pigment in both. Um, very flattering colour actually, that bronzer would, I mean obviously I'm, I'm pale as a pint of freshly poured milk um, and with a light hand it was fine but if I'd gone in heavier that would have, I mean obviously it's not going to work for someone who's the sort of shade of, of Nama Tang for example uh, but I reckon you could go quite deep with that, it's certainly a match for Benefit Hula so that's awesome, much much cheaper. Um, the Jeffrey um, highlight, the new one, I love. What I did notice though, when I was doing my eyeliner and putting these lashes on, is that where I'd da -da 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 and to, to blend it all in, I did have lots of glitter, just little glitter particles on the side of my nose, but they swept away really easily without any problem at all but just watch that if you have buffed it in just check the side of your nose for errant glitter um but i really like this it's it's such a it really is a beautifully blinding highlight but as i said if you don't like glitter in your highlights you're not going to like this um in terms of shade, I would say it's probably sarcophagus or Uranus would be the two closest of the Jeffrey Ordinary Skin Frosts. Um, eyeshadow, absolutely love this, which is really surprising because it is such a neutral palette for me. Um, but I actually really like the fact you can still get a really nice dramatic look out of it be interesting to see I mean obviously I'm already getting some transfer onto my upper lid here which doesn't surprise me because where I've got deep set eyes I always get that anyway be interesting to see just how much um, fallout I get from that glitter shade because obviously I didn't use a glitter glue under it because I didn't realize it was going to be such a flaky formula um, I already knew that I love uh, Slay All Day and I already knew that I love the cucumber, that's why I got a little mini one to put in my handbag. Um, I do actually prefer the cucumber and the coconut ones to the jasmine because where jasmine is so highly scented, um, I do have to give it a couple of seconds before I can open my eyes, otherwise my eyes do water a bit. So, if you've got sensitive eyes, um, I wouldn't advise the jasmine one, but the cucumber and the coconut, absolutely fine. I'm going to try out some of the other ones as well. Um, obviously, if you want to use my Gerard Cosmetics code to get 30% off, it is BOMBER in all caps. 
it is affiliated so I will earn a small commission from it uh, but to be honest it's more important for me that you get 30% off of your order uh, that 30% code will not work during the Black Friday sales though uh, but I have put my link below so that you can actually go straight into um, the Gerard Cosmetics page um, this lipstick not sticky at all, dried down really quickly transfer proof um, so comfortable as I was saying before this, this Gerard Cosmetics Hydromat and the Jeffree Star liquid lipsticks are the ones that I find the most comfortable to wear um, I absolutely love the formula of both of those uh, so yeah and I, I used my uh, thingies to curl my lashes which means that my ones actually link up nicely through these lashes as I didn't have to squeeze them with mascara on and get my fingers dirty so yay uh, so far I am really happy with all of my new purchases I will of course continue to use all of them and I will give you updates in future films so I hope you have found this helpful if you do it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button for me comment share subscribe when you subscribe don't forget to ring my bell ring my bell and choose all notifications so that you get told every time I upload another one of these videos I'm talking I have another one of these videos. I've got a lot to choose from. Why don't you pop over and have a look at some of the others? Certainly check out the haul so you can see what else I've got that I haven't used yet. Um, and once you've checked mine out, it'd be great if you could check out some of the ladies from the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group who are also li listed in my description box below. Uh, one final uh, public service announcement. YouTube have been unsubscribing people from my channel. I have now had a dozen people tell me that despite being long-term subscribers and having had the notification bell on, they had been unsubscribed from me. Uh, so please, please, please do double check um, that you are still subscribed and that you still have that notification bell selected. Right, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.